Hello everybody, welcome to The Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old, and today I'm talking about the kind of debut album from uh, Jean-Michel Jarre. Oxygen. Alright, it's finally time to talk about Jean-Michel Jarre. I've been promising this series for a long time now. In fact, I was planning on doing it back when I'd finished my Orbital series. But at the time, I couldn't decide whether to cover him or Croft work, since I hold him at about, you know, equal footing. I think Jar has done a much better job of, you know, staying consistent and forward-thinking, where Croft work kind of fell behind once the 80s rolled around, even though they were still really good. Though once I set up a vote for whether or not I wanted to do a series on Croft work or Jean-Michel Jarre, uh, Croft work kind of won the landslide. A lot more people know who they are, apparently, and Jar's importance to the genre might not be as well felt as Croftworks. I mean, I will admit, Jar definitely came later. Like, this album came out in 1976, and by this point in time, Croftwork already had Autobahn and Radioactivity, uh, Tangerine Dream were all the way up to Stratosphere. There was already a market for electronic music for the masses, even if still particularly niche at this point. Now, to be fair, Oxygen was also wasn't truly Jar's first album. I mean, it's technically his third. I typically consider it his first because it is so much more of a landmark release than anything he came up with before. But I will acknowledge that at this point, he, first of all, already had an album of experimental production music for TV called Deserted Palace from 1972 and a soundtrack for the film Les Granges Brûlées. And if you want to go even further back, he also produced a single called La Cage slash Eros Machine back in 1969, though he couldn't find a label who wanted to release it until 1971. was actually planning on starting this series with a discussion on those releases, but I decided last minute, I, I think I'm just going to stuff those in an odds and ends video, so you'll hear more detailed thoughts on those at a later date. I figured this, this album was a much better place to start my series. Because <laughs> this was the big breakout album for Jar. This was the place where he turned from a pretty alright cheap electronic film composer to a pioneer of the entire genre. Once Oxygen dropped, it completely changed the way people looked at electronic music. Obviously, I wasn't there in 1976 to experience what it was like firsthand, so I can't go into full detail, as other people might be able to. I will say this, though. I've noticed that even to this day, everyone will still tell you that this is Jar's best album. It's practically unanimous at this point. Like, there's not a strong consensus like that for Croftwork or Tangerine Dream. For Jar, he has almost become synonymous with this one album. I personally believe he deserves better than that, because there's so much more to his career than just this album, and he's had so many other great albums that deserve better recognition in my eyes. The guy is super interesting, and there's a reason I'm doing an entire series on his discography instead of just covering this one album and calling it a day. But even I will have to admit, I do probably agree that Oxygen is still probably his best one. A lot have come close, but I don't think he's ever going to be able to outdo this. It's made way too much of an impact at this point. Because here's the thing, there's still a clear separation between this album and other classics like Computer World. I listened to that album, and I can tell that it's not new. The ideas explored on that album have been so deeply ingrained into the genre that it's lost some of its original appeal and uniqueness much like Selected Ambient Works 8592 long after that. Yes, I know, both of them are still amazing albums. But people turned those albums into formulas and gold standards to try and replicate over and over to this day, so they don't feel as out of the box by today's standards. There's some of that with Oxygen, but somehow, I can listen to this album in 2018, and it still sounds fresh. There's such a recognizable sound to this album, every synth tone that Jar uses here, he basically 100% took for himself. Anytime someone else tries to replicate the success of this album, or use, just even go so far as to use a synth tone that was also used on this album, it's always obvious. You use any synth texture that resembles something from this album, you will remind me of Jean-Michel Jarre. That's how he's gotten to be basically the single most name-dropped artist on this channel. He made this album that, despite its huge effect on the genre, I feel has completely transcended the time in which it was released. 
Now, um, I suppose it isn't completely perfect. <laughs> I feel like a big part of its appeal is knowing that it did come out all the way back in 1976. If this were to come out now, I think it'd be believable, but I don't think people would be going nuts over it in the same way. And I think Jar kind of proved that point with the recent release of Oxygen 3, which was des specifically designed to show what it might be like if the original were released now. Just take a look at the comment section of my review of that album and see the people who have very vocal opinions on how that album, it was terrible and missed the point of the original and all that nonsense. I personally still think that album is freaking awesome, but I digress, I already have a video on it, obviously. But that's not to say the original Oxygen isn't incredible without all the historical context. I still love it from front to back and consider it one of my favorite albums of all time. I like some parts more than others, sure, but it is definitely the kind of album that makes sense not having any real track titles. Everything is just Oxygen part whatever. Also the case with many of his later albums as well some of which deserve not having track titles, but not all of them. <laughs> I don't think I have a ton to say about each of the individual tracks here, because a lot of them are comprised of the same kinds of sounds. Lots of expansive, spacey pads, light, bubbly, melodic sequences, giant, dramatic keyboard lines, ghostly whistling synths, cascading washes of bleeping and blooping, a clicking percussion track that sometimes sounds like tapping marbles together, whooshing wind effects, all creating this super immersive and heavily detailed sound environment that feels like it came from the future and can only be attributed to Jean-Michel Jarre. You hear the first part and you discover exactly what you're getting into. There's no percussion in part one, it's just enveloping you in its atmosphere, more or less showcasing all the various sounds the album has to offer and built around a fairly recognizable chord progression inspired by classical music. It's so intense and harrowing that it just pulls you in immediately. But part two is where the album really starts to get going for me. It's where the album starts to form a beat, kind of like a, almost like a heartbeat, with quite the bouncy pulse and a very recognizable high-pitched melody starting us off. <laughs> Although digressing into lots of other bubbly sequences later down the line, uh, part three makes the beats go away again, but it's so much more intense and dramatic with this giant keyboard bass line. And then on the second side, uh, part four is probably my personal favorite on the album. It was the first jar track I ever heard via an iTunes Essentials playlist. Very similar beat to part two, but with an even catchier melody than that one. Do, 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 do. This track is basically Jar's theme song or something. Always the first one that comes to mind whenever I think about him. <laughs> part 5, meanwhile, is kind of a two-parter in and of itself. The first half has these very light and almost heavenly pads, and the similar dramatic, hard-hitting bass lines to those of Part 3. But the second half is a lot livelier and more energetic, with lots of sharp little percussion snapping. <laughs> and fast-moving sequences layered on top of each other, and one bright keyboard line placed at the very top. It's actually kind of hard to figure out where the beat is. One sequence seems to have a stiffer 4-4 beat, but another sequence seems to make it feel bouncier as if in 6-8. You could feel either pulse, and yet it all feels like it meshes well and belongs together. Finally, we finish with part 6, which sounds kind of like part 4, but noticeably toned down and slower, and having its own melody that's catchy in its own right. Do 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 I think I decided while listening for this review that I like it almost just as much as 2 or 4, even though I don't listen to it out of context nearly as much. That's the kind of ingredients that go into this album. Maybe to someone who's never listened to it, one could find maybe the experience is a little on the samey side, but to me, nearly every moment in this album is totally iconic and easily recognizable. Overall, I, uh, I don't think there's really much else I have to add to this album that I haven't already. 
Sure, it's already been praised to hell and back by so many people over the years, but I, I have to agree with the majority on this one. It's also become a general fixture of my life, having first picked up the entire album in high school at some point and listened to it enough that I, pre I basically know the entire thing by heart now. I still think there's more to Jar than just this album, and he has delivered so much more great music than this that's also worth people's time, but I will still have to mark this as the biggest high point in his career that he I, he would never really be able to top. It deserves every single bit of hype that it's gotten over the past 40 plus years. It's undoubtedly an electronic music classic and an absolutely essential listen. I'm overall feeling a solid 9 out of 10. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters, they're awesome people, if you want to add yourself to that list or make me review something, link in the description. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today, see you next time.